To make my lost media videos a little easier to write when I don't have a super clear idea on one, I've decided to do a video where I focus on a bunch of random stuff once in a while, so none of the topics I'll cover today have anything to do with each other, and I'm gonna try and convince myself that that's okay, so let's just get into it. A few weeks back, I made a video about Showbiz Pizza Place and Chuck E. Cheese's. You don't have to have seen that video to understand this topic, but it does help, of course. Regardless, I will give a little bit of relevant background. In 1977, Nolan Bushnell, the co-founder of Atari, also had a hand in founding Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater, primarily as a way to provide a chain of spaces where Atari could put their arcade cabinets and make money. Other than this, the restaurants would provide food as well as entertainment in the form of an animatronic band of animals. This would be a staple of the chain, and would be one of many to participate in the world of family restaurant animatronic entertainment. Try saying that five times fast. After the numbers started to prove Pizza Time Theater's success, and with Nolan Bushnell now seeing the whole operation as a passion project of his, the aim was to extend the idea of that branding even further. Sometime in 1983, Bushnell opened a spin-off franchise of sorts, Zapp's Bar & Grill, an establishment presumably aimed toward adults, though playing on the same concepts. At relatively the same time, at a good number of Chuck E. Cheese's locations, a cabaret room was worked in that was designed more for adults, however, this theming would often fail to come across, and kids would enjoy their time in there regardless. Bushnell most likely wanted the concept to succeed, as it would be a good source of revenue, for obvious reasons that I'm not going to mention. The idea was that one animatronic would serve as the entertainment for a single room, or in the case of Zaps, an entire bar. Literally almost nothing is known about Zaps Bar & Grill other than it was just that, as well as that the mascot for the establishment establishment was Wolfman Zap, a presumably retrofitted Pizza Time Theater animatronic made to look like a Western-influenced wolf. Very, very few images of him exist online or otherwise, so it's hard to even get a solid idea of what he's supposed to look like. It's safe to assume that an animatronic meant for an entertainment space would have some kind of show tape, a program set of motions, music, and voice lines to go along with it. This is the exact basis for an entry on the Lost Media Wiki concerning the existence of such a tape, or even multiple tapes, as it was common for animatronics at Pizza Time Theater to be given multiple or updated tapes as time went on. Very poorly documented, especially compared to its sister establishment, Pizza Time Theater, only five Zaps locations have been confirmed to have existed in San Jose, California, Boulder, Colorado, Tampa, Florida, Reno, Nevada, and Dallas, Texas. It can't be confirmed whether or not all of these locations had a Wolfman Zap animatronic. It may even be possible that the animatronic we do have images of was the only one, a prototype crafted from another pre-existing PTT animatronic meant for a single location just for funsies, I guess. Although evidence does lean towards some degree of mass production, as a PTT manual from around the 80s mentioning Wolfman Zap compiles his information in the same way as order for other mass-produced PTT characters. There is no footage of Wolfman Wolfman Zap in action, or any photos taken of him in context in the actual restaurant. In 2015, an image surfaced of a dilapidated animatronic that shares a lot of visual similarities with Wolfman Zap sitting in the back of a truck. However, it's too worn down to tell for sure that it's definitely him, and with so many other family-owned restaurants creating their own animatronics around that time, it could very well be from one of those. I will say he does bear the same facial structure as early Pizza Time Theater animatronics though, it's unknown what happened to this animatronic or how old the image itself is. It's also not certain when Zaps closed, but the website Open Corporates has the franchise's dissolution date listed as 1986. If you're interested in learning more about Zaps and the Wolfman, I will link both this page and the Lost Media Wiki entry in the description. I have always loved Minecraft YouTube. Even if the image of it that I once had in my mind has been tainted by the actions of certain Minecraft YouTubers I used to like, and I'm not affiliating myself with Dream SMP, take that somewhere else. No, my stomping ground nowadays is Hermitcraft, and I don't get a lot of opportunities to talk about it, so I'm excited for this next entry. The YouTuber Grian is a member of the Hermitcraft SMP, but what we'll be talking about is his content from another Minecraft SMP, Evolution, or EVO for short. This SMP followed Grian, among others, as they played through various versions of Minecraft, working their way up to whichever version was the newest as of 2017. Within the span of his run with EVO, Grian uploaded 51 episodes between October 1st, 2017 and September 11th of 2018, two of which were live streams, different from the pre-recorded episodes he'd usually put out. 
Episodes 29 and 38 were streamed live on Grian's YouTube on January 30th of 2018 and April 10th of the same year, respectively. Both of these streams have since then been privated, leaving them inaccessible to fans and the general public. Fortunately, episode 38 has been located fully, but episode 29 is still completely lost. This stream is approximately 1 hour, 26 minutes, and 54 seconds long, and features Grian and another member, Tardis, adding a duck beak to a replica of the head of Grian's Minecraft skin, located at the world's spawn point. As of 2018, Grian's primary content is Hermitcraft, and to my knowledge, he hasn't discussed or referenced Evo outside of certain themes and easter eggs in other SMPs he's been involved with as other projects, like Third Life or Last Life or Double Life or whatever it's called. Real fans have been around since it was Third Life, am I right? Okay, well, I looked it up and apparently it's referred to as a whole as the Life series, but whatever. I'm getting off topic, but yes, I'm pretty sure Grian referenced themes from his Evo playthrough and roleplay in the Life series. We've heard no word on whether or not he'll release this episode in any way, but I really don't see that happening because it's just clearly not at the front of his focus. I'll link the Lost Media Wiki page on this topic if you're interested in learning more. As I mentioned in my Glitch Text video, the pilots for kids shows are usually the ones that get lost most often. They're predominantly used in the minds of most showrunners as a way to introduce the show's characters, setting, and overall theme or plot points. So after this has been done for the show's premiere audience, which is more often than not the biggest audience the show will get, there's little to no reason to air the pilot again, because they've now established all of that, and the rest of a kid's show is designed so children can pick up on those things even after the fact. This is especially true for educational and preschool to elementary age kids programming, an example of which we'll be talking about today. I grew up on a lot of puppetry and live-action costumed kids shows, and they've become one of, if not the most nostalgic things I can think of from my childhood. One that stuck with me is Rags, a hybrid live-action and animated show from 2006 that focused on a band of anthropomorphic dogs. The band consisted of five dogs, Rags, Razzles, Trilby, B-Max, and Pido, and followed them getting into different situations either between each other or on their own, with all of them coming together to solve whatever issue was at hand, usually ending in them singing a song together. The characters were portrayed by actors in fursuits, I mean costumes, and were dubbed over in editing by their voice actors. Rags first aired in Australia starting in 2006, running until 2007 with the U.S. picking it up a year later in 2008 and running until later in the same year. Rags consisted of 195 half-hour-long episodes, seeing reruns up until 2012 on its parent channel PBS, and since the show had reached a syndication point, it could also be watched on the now-defunct Cubo channel up until its dissolution in 2021, as, as far as I know. I do plan to make a video solely about Cubo in the future because it's very nostalgic and interesting to me. I have very personal ties with the channel. The concept for Rags goes back as far as 1990, with the show's creator, Tony Steedman, having created the story of the dogs for her daughter. This later expanded into mall experiences where the stories were shared in the form of a sort of story time, I'm assuming, which also acted as the promotion for the stories and characters to be picked up as its own show or visual media. By 2001, this method saw some success, as the advertising executive turned girl boss received enough attention on Rags to be able to produce an hour-long pilot with the help of a former HBO producer, Carol Rosen. The pilot was structured in a similar way to a music video, a concept that the entire show would adopt in some way. Titled Pause Up, after the main song featured in the episode, this pilot was produced using much different costumes, more baggy and lumpy in nature, probably due to a lack of budget when compared to the official production. Noticeably, the costume's mouths move and the eyes don't move as much or at all when compared to the finalized versions of the costumes. There are a number of clips of the actual pilot that have been uploaded online by a singular channel. These clips range from between 2 and 4 minutes long, so they make up around half an hour of the full pilot. The full pilot has yet to be found, and since this pilot itself was mostly meant to pitch the show, paired with the fact that it came six years prior to the series being televised, I'm not sure the public will ever see it. The song Pause Up can be listened to both from a clip of the pilot and in reprisals in the actual series. Rags is still in fact being aired in different countries as recently as 2018 in South Africa, and on the channel Smile and Telemundo fairly recently as well in the US and Canada. There is a YouTube channel for the show that was last updated on February 11th of 2023, as of 2023. It looks to me like they're uploading both full and partial versions of Rags episodes on there. This 2001 pilot is not included. 
There's also a RAGS website that still exists that I can't say has been updated as recently, but the copyright at the bottom does say 2023. Even though the images for the socials they've linked and the overall look of the website is somewhat outdated. I will link the Lost Media Archive article, if you can call it that, as well as the RAGS YouTube if you're interested. So let me know what you think about this structure. I will say it made it easier for me to write since I wasn't focused on just one thing or making sure every example fit a certain theme I was going for. I know this video is kind of short, but my lost media videos usually always are. Um, hopefully the next couple of lost media videos won't be as short because I do have planned out themes for them. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.